Setting up an audio interface is fairly straightforward, but if you're new, you may not know what cable goes where or how to set up the drivers in your computer. So in this video, I'm actually gonna show you how to set up a USB audio interface with Ableton Live. Check it out. Hey there, Matthew with MatthewCreating.com and on this channel, I do setup videos, tutorials, and overviews helping you create music. If you're new here, consider subscribing. So in this video, I'm using the Scarlett 2i2 and I'm using Ableton Live 10. And the process is fairly straightforward for whatever interface you might be using and whatever doll you might be using. Maybe you're using a previous version of Ableton Live or if you're using the intro version or you know Ableton Live Lite, Ableton Live Standard. It's going to be the same for all of those dolls. And you know, it's a very simple process. So let's go ahead, get right into it. So if you're on a Windows computer and using a USB interface, you're probably gonna to need to download drivers. In this case, I'm using a Scarlett 2i2. So I have on my computer, Google, I'm just gonna search for it because that is the easy way to do it. Okay, and then you just click on here and then you pick your product. So depending on which, audio interface you have, it's gonna be similar. You just search for it and then you download it. So this is Scarlett 2i2. Pick the correct generation you have. If you have second or third, pick that. So all you need to do is click download. It's gonna start downloading. Once that's done downloading, open up that driver or that exe file, install it, and then you need to restart your computer. All right, so once you restarted your computer, You'll see on the desktop, it says Focusrite ASIO control panel. If you open that, it'll say no hardware connected. Now what you need to do at this point is go ahead and plug in your hardware. And you can see once I plugged it in, right away, the sample rate came up here is at 48K, buffer size at 256, okay? I'm just going to uh, minimize this. Let's minimize that for now. And then let's go ahead, open Ableton Live. This is Ableton Live 10 suite. It doesn't matter which version of Ableton Live 10 you're using. This is going to work for you. Now it says audio is disabled. Please choose an audio output device in the audio preferences. Okay, so we need to set up the audio in here before we can even start making music in Ableton. So go ahead, click OK. All right, this is a new blank project. Now, if you see here, it says options. So this is where you're gonna be able to get your preferences. Now, if you're in a Mac, it's gonna be over here somewhere and it's gonna say preferences. Right here is options, preferences for Windows 10, okay? Now, it says driver type, ASIO, which is what we want, but it might say no audio here or it might be this here. Now, you can see the focus right actually shows up when you pick this. But if you look down here, your latency is at 279 milliseconds. That is going to be basically unusable. But if you click into here and then go to your ASIO and then pick your, you know, Focusrite USB ASIO. Now, once you get your ASIO driver up, you should see the latency is at, you know, 29.9. That's way more manageable. All right. So really at that point, you have your audio interface set up inside your computer and you're not going to be able to hear anything yet though, because we don't have our speakers connected. So I'm just going to close that for now and um, let's go ahead and plug in our speakers. So I'm using the Ream Silvers by Hosa. So I got these off of Amazon. Uh, they're balanced cables. Now, if you look at the back of your device, the one closest, okay, you got two ports here, the one closest to your USB cable, it's actually the right speaker and then the other one's left. So make sure your speakers are turned off before you plug in your speaker cables. So this right here is right, that's output two. This is left, that's output one. So just remember that, okay, I'm plugging in the right one now. So what I'm gonna do is take the other end of that cable, okay, this might be better to do this one at a time, uh, you know, depending on your setup, but now I'm going to take that other end and plug it into my speaker. I got my um, KRK Rocket 5s up here. So I want to plug the other end up there. Then I'm going to take my other speaker cable, plug it into, you know, output one. 
which is going to be left. And then I want to plug it into the other KRK Rocket 5. Now, if you're using your headphones, I got my Audio Techno AT HM50 X's here. If you're using headphones like these, um, you know, you won't have to put those speaker cables in. You would just take the end of the headphones and plug it into the front. Right there is the headphone jack. You just plug it in there and then, you know, you turn this knob. This knob right here is actually going to give you volume, the little one. Now, the big one is for your speakers. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that all the way down for now. Okay. So now that the speakers are actually connected, we can do a test signal. Okay. So if you go to options, go to preferences down here, it says test tone. If you go ahead and push that, it's going to give you a consistent tone that should actually come out of your monitors. Now we don't hear anything, but we have our monitors turned down and our speakers are turned off. So what we can do is turn our speakers on now. Okay, so after you have your speakers turned on, go ahead and push that test tone. So the test tone is on on. I want to turn up the monitor and we'll be able to hear that test tone. Now don't blow your speakers, okay? But there you go. Now Obviously, you're going to have volume in the back of your speakers as well. So make sure that those are at the proper, you know, level. Make sure they're turned up uh, or you're not going to be able to hear anything. But now we got this set. Um, I want to turn the test tone off. So that test tone was actually at 440 hertz right there. Okay. If you want to turn it up, you, you could turn it up. If you want to turn the uh, frequency, you could change the frequency here. If you want to stimulate like a higher CPU usage, you could turn that up there. See if you can get it to break and crackle. If you're finding value in this video, remember to give it a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel and it helps spread this knowledge to people who may need it. So I appreciate you for doing that. So we're really set up. We're actually set up to, to hear and make music, okay? And what I wanna show you now is just a couple more settings. Just so you're kind of familiar with this. Now we got our driver type, the ASIO driver. Then you have your audio device, your Focusrite USB ASIO driver. All right. Then you have your channel configuration. So right here, you can configure your input. Now remember, your inputs are one and two. So here's your mono input. If you click this off, you're not gonna be able to have one and two individual. If you click it on, you'll be able to have one and two. And over here is your stereo inputs. All right, and now remember, you need to have these active to be able to record into your device. Now, if your device has several inputs, you'll see them listed. You could just turn whatever ones on or off that you want there. All right, click OK. Here's your output configuration. You got you know output one and two, because this is the Scarlett 2i2, so you get two outputs. Now, you could turn these on or off here. Now, keep in mind, if you turn these off, you see how it turns that stereo pair off? you're not gonna be able to hear anything. So that's kinda why we have this audio interface set up so we can output it to our speakers, right? So you need to keep these on, okay? And again, if you had multiple outputs, they would show up here, like three and four, five and six, etc. Okay, now here is hardware setup. If you click that, it's gonna bring up this ASIO control panel. Now this is, uh, significant okay because right here you get your sample rate okay your in out sample rate which is set to 44.1 kilohertz which is a good standard you know way to record if you're just starting you're probably going to want to use this so that's good there now you could change it here or you could change it here and wherever that went it's not pulling it back up all right you could change it here and it doesn't matter. Now, if you wanted like, now you can see that it's the same and that's the same. Now, if you want to change it for video, you know, just use this box over here. Now, 48 kilohertz is more for video. All right. And then you got 88.2, which is actually a double of 44.1, which is CD standard. 44.1 is CD standard. So you're getting double the sample rate there. Uh, but 
when you output this, you're probably going to go back to 44.1. So just keep that in mind. When you actually bounce this down, you're probably going to go back to here anyway. So um, if you keep this setting, it's going to save some hard drive space if you're going to do a lot of audio recording. And then you can go up all the way up to 96 kilohertz on this one. Now, you'll notice one thing in particular. So if I put this down here on 44.1, just notice the overall latency. Now, if I double that at 44.2, the latency is going to be at 15. Okay, you can see how it cut that down. Basically halved it. All right, so we're at 21.9. If you double it, we're at 15. Okay, and then, you know, if you do video... All right, so there you go. So um, so your sample rate directly affects your latency, okay? And this right here, you know, just keep this on high quality unless your computer is like terrible. Just keep that on high quality. Um, your buffer size is another thing that affects your latency. So uh, when you're actually recording, you might want it on a lower buffer size. Now let me click hardware setup because you actually have to have this. To change it all right so here's your buffer size uh you know if you're mixing and everything you could probably even put this all the way up here okay but look at your overall latency that's not really going to be usable when you're recording okay so when you're recording you probably want to use something like you know maybe 512 but really if you can if your computer will handle it you know go as low as you can go when you're recording like whatever that may be, maybe it's 128. And then you could just lower your latency. Now, that might not work for you, okay? And it doesn't even go to 16. Like I could try to push 16 and see what it does. See, it goes to 32. So the lowest that Ableton is going to let me use is 32 samples, uh, which at 44.1 gives me 2.5 milliseconds okay now if i try to put this on the highest everything so this is as low as i can get the latency to go and so what the latency is is basically the round trip delay all right so your input latency this is going to be your input from your one and two inputs on the front of your device and it's going to go through your computer and then output all right so it's going through your computer input and then it's going to your output at 3.14 milliseconds. And then you're not gonna hear it until 5.94 milliseconds later in theory, okay? But you can compensate for that here. So I'll get into all this more in detail, but if you notice, if I bring this to negative five, my overall latency is 0.94 milliseconds. All right, now I'll get into this later. This is more just like, let's get you set up and going. But to give you a little bit of background, this is what this stuff does. So everything's really set up. Um, let me go ahead and change my hardware settings. Um, so I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna pull this back down. Okay, so if, all right. So we have something usable so we can actually play and hear what we're doing. So let's just close this for now. Next thing I want to talk about is audio track. So you got your audio track here and here. This is just a default standard, you know, blank project in Ableton Live 10. So you got your default inputs here and then you got your output. So if you look over here, you got your master output at one and two. And you also have your cue out. We'll worry about that later on. But master output is here at one and two. You only get two outputs on this particular interface uh, all right now you can see one and two one or two you could pick whatever you want there so just keep it on one and two now here's your input now here's input one by default it puts input one here let me turn the gain down i was noticing that my gain was up on that all right so if you look default this is input one this is input two all right i'll go in this in future videos more but I just want to show you that you're actually set up to work right now so what I want to show you is you could take a guitar cable plug it in here I want to plug this to input one and when you do that make sure you're on instrument okay there's a switch line or instrument I'll put it on instrument 
Now, once I get that on instrument input, I'll be able to connect an electric guitar directly into my software here. So I have my Squire Infinity Series Telecaster right here. I plug the other end right there. Grab a pick. I'm gonna turn up my guitar. All right, I'm gonna play a note. And I can already see my inputs getting a signal right there. So I wanna put the monitor on in and we can hear what this is gonna actually sound like. Okay, I got the gain turned all the way down on the interface and we're getting a signal around negative 12. All right, so I could play some chords. What you're hearing is actually the guitar going into the software and then back out of the software because I actually have this connected into a um, into an interface over here I'm recording into. So, and this is on instrument. Now, if you look right here, I have direct monitor off. I could turn that on and hear the guitar basically direct without it going through, or I could just keep that off. But um, but there we go. We're set up. So if I wanted to, I could arm this track, you know, click a record here, and you know, we could record. Go ahead and stop it. Now if I double click on this clip, you can see our recordings right there. So I could bring that in. You know what I'm saying? Boom. I can play that clip. Now we're not going to be able to hear it because I have this on monitor in. So if I put this on auto or off, you'll be able to hear it. All right, stop the clip. So literally that's how easy it is to set up your Focusrite Scarlett. Now, any other interface that you use is going to be similar and it's going to be just as easy to set up. So there you go. That's the basics on how to set up your USB audio interface with Ableton Live. And if you want more information about USB interfaces or Ableton Live, click the screen over here. That's going to take you to a playlist where I'm going to put future videos about Ableton Live, you know, and this way you can get kind of educated on how, you know, to use Ableton Live and the basics with music creation. My name is Matthew. Continue creating music and we'll talk soon.